Remember that time you were about to log off for a nice long weekend and then BAM! You get an email or a message that comes in as urgent. A user has written a wall of text saying how their important presentation was botched because their remote session kept stuttering or freezing. And when it did run, it was grainy, making it impossible to read. Now, no matter what you're doing, having a great performing remote session is critical for all of your remote presentations, day-to-day -day office work, 3D modeling, or even gaming. Now, every part of this puzzle is important for you to find your FPS happy place. And I've even got an extra powerful secret coming up later. The first issue could be that you're just asking too much of your computer. Every computer has a limited set of resources like CPU cores, RAM, and disk. And your computer is just like you. If you have to support everybody at the office while you keep getting calls from those annoying family members asking for help while trying to spend time with your kids and dinner just caught fire, odds are you're overworked and headed for a nervous breakdown. And your computer can feel this way too. So show it some love by cutting back on the number of programs you're running at once and reduce the number of browser tabs you have open. You could also boost your performance by upgrading those old hard drives to SSDs, which is like cloning yourself to get everything done with half the effort. Now that you have more performance on your computer, you should be seeing some improvement, but just doing that might not be enough. And that's because you might be standing out in the proverbial cornfield with an old cell phone. You know, can you hear me now? So our next stop is to look at your local network. A wired LAN connection will generally give you a faster and smoother, or at least more stable experience than Wi-Fi. And depending on your home router, you may even be able to optimize your remote session using QoS or quality of service, but that's another video. So your best connection option is to disconnect from Wi-Fi and jack in like Neo in the Matrix. And now that you have the best connection, you need to think about the super highway we call the internet. Relying on old cached information is like using one of those paper maps from 10 years ago instead of a modern GPS. And this is right where DNS comes in. You should clear your DNS cache so you have the latest internet routes. And you can do that by opening a command prompt and typing in ipconfig space forward slash flush DNS. Now, most ISPs don't use the fastest DNS servers either, so you may want to change that. And according to this recent Livewire article, these are the fastest DNS servers in the world, and they're all free. To do this, right-click over here in the system tray, select Network and Internet Settings, then select your Ethernet connection. Click on the Edit button for your DNS servers, switch it from Automatic to Manual, and then enable IPv4. Now, I like to use 1.1.1.1 from Cloudflare, and then use 8.8.8.8 from Google. So in case one of those servers has an issue, I'm still covered. So now that you're speeding down the highway, we need to think about your car. Are you driving a Fiat or a McLaren? Now the faster the car, the faster your internet connection. And these are usually sold to you by how much bandwidth you have. So if you have a low bandwidth Fiat, you may need to think about a faster one. But no matter how fast the connection, it won't matter if there's a traffic jam. So you'll want to cut down on those other bandwidth hogs like people streaming the latest episode of Book of Boba Fett. Trust me, the Mandalorian's better anyway. Or I can bring you in cold. And once you've cleared away all of that traffic, you're driving your awesome supercar, but you still have to deal with speed limits. And those are your connection protocols. They can affect your latency and even limit your FPS. So we'll want to raise those speed limits so you have the lowest latency connections possible. And there are three protocol options, so you need to pick a lane here. We've got Azure Virtual Desktop using the standard TCP protocol, then RDP Short Path, which uses UDP, or Direct RDP. Now UDP is much more efficient a protocol than TCP is. And when I made the switch, I saw a latency drop from 180 milliseconds down to 15. And that's gonna help transmit all of those frames to you faster, creating an even smoother experience. And one of the ways to check this is you can go here to the AVD Experience Estimator. It shows the round trip time of your connection in milliseconds. And that's from your browser to all of the different Azure regions, which means that I should be building my VMs in East US 2 for the best experience. Now here's the secret to getting the smoothest remote sessions possible. 
You know how you have the emergency vehicles and they're allowed to break the speed limit, but you can't? Well, it's time to make your McLaren an undercover cop car so you can zoom right past that 30 FPS speed limit. Sign into your remote session and open the registry editor. Copy this path from the video description and paste it right there in the address bar. Now it's always best to back up any registry keys before you edit them. So right click over there on WinStations and export and just save that to a secure location in case you need it. Now right click over here on a blank space, go to new and select D word. We'll call this DWM frame interval with no spaces. Then double click on your new entry and we'll want to give it a decimal value of 15. This will enable the maximum frame rate that RDP can deliver to your client. Now it's important to understand that this setting doesn't actually change the frame rate of RDP, it just removes the cap. The actual frame rate is going to depend on the application and your computer's hardware. And if all of this doesn't unlock all the FPS you need, you can try editing your Windows policies. Now if your VM is not joined to a domain, click start and type gpedit.msc. If you are joined to a domain, you're going to want to do this in the group policy management console. Add a new policy or just edit an existing one. From here, everything's the same. Go to the computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components, remote desktop services, remote desktop session host, and remote desktop environment. Double click on the prioritize H.264 policy and enable. And you'll need to do a reboot before those settings will take effect. Now, if you have done all of this and still feel like you've got a flat tire, there is one more thing you can do. Get out of your car and switch to a jet and click right over here to see how to make that happen. Happy learning.